Hey guys, it's Miss Allen. Um, I'm coming to you guys today with a short video about um, using context clues to determine vocabulary. So everything that I'm going to be talking about is going to come from this reading strategies book. Okay. Um, so basically, when you are reading, you know, anyone will come across a word from time to time that they do not know. Um, there are just so many words out there and there's actually words being created all the time. And so it's really important as a reader to have some skills for understanding those words when you come across them. Every reader, me, a young child, an older person than me, you know, every person is going to have to know how to do this because if I'm reading and I don't understand a word, Okay, that's going to affect my understanding of the whole text. You know, sometimes I might just skip over something because I'm just like, eh, I'll get the rest of it. But it is important to stop when you can so that you can understand what's going on in your text. So I'm just going to share the three different strategies that are in your Google Classroom um, that, again, come from our Reading Strategies book. The first one is to insert a synonym. So I'm going to show you guys a chart inside my book. All right, for inserting a synonym, if you see this anchor chart here, it says, you know, a synonym is a word that means the same or similar thing. So the top sentence says, when her best friend grabbed her toy, she was furious with him. So if we pretend, hey, I don't know that word, furious. Okay, let me insert a synonym. You might think, well, how do I know the synonym if I don't know the first word? Okay, that's a great question. What I like to do is look at the sentence and think about what is going on. So with that top situation, it is that her best friend grabbed her toy. You know, in general, we're not happy when somebody takes something from us. So you can think that that mood of that sentence and that situation is a bad one. So something negative. You know, she would not be feeling happy under most situations. So that's why in the little cloud, it is brainstorming and says, maybe that means angry or mad. If you look at the bottom sentence, he placed the glass of orange juice alongside his plate. Again, if I don't know the word alongside, it's kind of hard to brainstorm a synonym. But if I look at what is in the sentence, that's called the context. If I look at what's going on, I can think about my own life. You know, if I have a glass of orange juice and I have a plate, normally those are together. You know, I might have breakfast or whatever and I have all my stuff that I'm using, my drink and my food, together. So uh, that's why they came up with by, next to, and near. So for inserting a synonym, you know, just kind of think about what's been going on so far what that word might mean, and just try some other words in the place to see what might make sense. All right, the next strategy is going to be multiple meaning words. Okay, we've talked about these for years, honestly. Um, basically, these should be almost like a red flag to you when you're reading and you hear a word that you do know, but you think, hey, that really doesn't make sense in the context of the sentence. Could that word have a multiple meaning? Could it mean something other than what I normally think of it as to be? Okay, so words can have multiple meanings. Do not forget that. For example, the force of gravity, you know, a force means something from nature that just happens, such as pulling um, an object towards the center of the earth. So an apple is going to fall out of a tree. That's different than she forced me to do it. I didn't want to. So if I'm reading a sentence again and I come across a word that doesn't make complete sense as it's written, I might want to check and see does that word have multiple meanings. Okay. And the other one that we're going to look at is using text features. So this is going to be in a nonfiction or an informational text. If you'll look at my anchor chart here. Okay, get help from the features of the text. Okay, I noticed a lot of you guys, whenever we were taking our FMP reassessments in February and March, if you were reading an informational text, 
you were pausing and looking at the captions that went with photographs and diagrams and all that. That's great because even though it's not like in the big mass of the text, it does have information that can be useful. Okay, so this is just kind of pointing out the use of a diagram. So I'm going to show you right here. Okay, this labels the different parts of this bug. Okay, you may also see a photograph or a drawing. So it, this shows the parts, but then this just kind of shows what it would look like walking around in real life. And in this case, thankfully, it's not actually that big in real life. You know, it's a magnified version and also a glossary. Sometimes in nonfiction text, you will have words defined on the side of the um, page or it may even be in the back. So I have an example of one of my son's books that I just grabbed from his library. This text is called Animals and we're gonna look for some text features in here. So of course, this is just showing all about different animals and it's a very engaging book because there are lots of different photographs like this. But if you'll notice, there are also lots of text features here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through real quick and give you some examples after I show you a few of the pages. So obviously we're in the bird section here. Just tons of information. Most people would use a book like this as a resource, you know, when they wanted to find something specific about an animal, they would look it up rather than just kind of reading this in its entirety. But anyway, all right, let me find a picture to stop at. Okay, so this is the bird section to start with. This is, you know, really breaking down that section of the book and that topic. Okay. And it also has subtopics like these are flightless birds. Okay. Maybe I don't know what the word flightless is and I'm trying to figure that vocabulary out. Well, I can look at some of the examples. Okay. These are actually by and far larger birds. And if you think about it, you know, humans don't fly and we don't have wings, but we're also pretty heavy compared to a small bird that might be hanging out in my backyard. You know, these birds can be really big. And so that can help support what the idea of flightless might mean. Okay. Um, and it actually talks about that right here um, with their size. Okay. Um, with the text features, we'll just kind of look at this one since it's right here. We have a list of fast facts. We have a caption that goes with a photograph. Okay. We have a caption that goes with this larger photograph. And if you kind of glance through, a lot of them have that. You know, it just kind of explains what things are. Maybe you didn't know what claws were, for example. Well, here's a claw, you know. So anytime you're given these small words or these dark black words or these big capitalized words, try to slow it down, look section by section to get a little more information to understand. I was looking back here to see if there's a glossary. Yep. Most nonfiction texts will include a glossary, and so if there's a particular term that I want to look up, it's just like a little mini dictionary for me that has some words that this author felt might be a little more challenging for people. So this is arranged in ABC order, and so you can quickly find what you're looking for. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful for you as you review over understanding different vocabulary words and using your context clues. Thanks. Bye.